In this video, we'll motivate the use of kernel density estimators with data that exhibit nonlinear trends. And in particular, we'll show why normal linear regression, even with polynomial terms, is not really an optimal uh, modeling choice, and why a nonparametric method like uh, a kernel estimation might be better. So let's take a look at uh, this bone density data and um, we'll use this to show some of the failings of normal linear regression. So this bone data um, is in the um, elementary statistical learning package uh, in R. It has 485 observations on four different variables, but we're just pulling out two uh, for simplicity. So our response here is a, a relative spinal bone mineral density measurement and our predictor is age. And so you can tell from the, from the plot here that it doesn't appear like there's really a linear relationship. It, it appears like maybe there's a lot of noise in the data, but that the true relationship seems to be uh, nonlinear. Perhaps a better uh, way to diagnose nonlinearity would be to look at the residuals versus fitted values of this linear regression model. So I have that plot here, and I think it's relatively clear to see first that there's um, evidence of non-constant variance perhaps, right? We have maybe smaller variance here and much larger variance here. And also that there's some structure here. So it seems like there might be some nonlinear structure that's not being captured and that's uh, showing up in the residuals. So. Uh, that seems problematic and we should not use the simple linear regression model but try to figure figure out something else so what might that something else be well we could try something like adding polynomial terms to the model so we might say well our response yi is equal to an intercept term plus a slope times our predictor plus another slope times the same predictor squared so notice here that all of these predictors are the same. We're just um, raising them to higher and higher powers. And so D is just the degree of the polynomial that we'd like to fit. And of course, the natural question is, how do we choose D? So there are some heuristics that have been offered. And I'll mention two that are in our textbook, Linear Models with R, on page 140. So one is that we can start with D equals 1 and add terms until they're not statistically significant anymore. So we might start with one. If we have a statistically significant simple linear regression model, then bump up D to two. So add in the square term. If that's significant, add a cubic term, etc., until we find one that's not statistically significant. The other option is that we could start with a large D and eliminate terms that are not statistically significant, starting with the highest order terms. And just note that it's usually a bad idea, for example, to eliminate like an x squared term, but keep in an x cubed term. So if you, you know, start with d equal to 5, for example, then you should eliminate that term if it's not statistically significant, but not eliminate something lower first. One problem with these heuristics is that they don't yield consistent results. So in this example, uh, the first method would suggest that we leave d equals 1. So that's just the simple linear model, linear model. But of course, that's not right. And the second method uh, suggests a degree 4 polynomial. And so that's the fit that I have here. And notice that that doesn't seem too bad, right? That does seem to uh, capture some of the curvature in this in this data. However, the residuals with this model, the degree 4 polynomial, still show some signs of misfit. And worse, suppose we had two predictors, which is, uh, you know, suggested by the data set. If you take a look at this full data set, there are, are several predictors. So what if we had to include more? We would need to decide on D1, the degree of the polynomial term associated with predictor 1 and d2 associated with um, predictor 2. And that process would become really messy, right? How would we think about eliminating different terms when we have 
you know, many possible predictors in this example too. Uh, so it would be great to come up with uh, an automated way to decide on the form of x, right? Not just sort of picking polynomials that seem right, but it might be nice to, you know, have the data try to show us what f is. And kernel smoothing is one non-parametric method for trying to do that. So kernel smoothers are non-parametric methods for choosing the nonlinear structure that best fits the data. And here I just give a plot of the same data with uh, a kernel estimator uh, superimposed on top. And this looks pretty similar to the degree 4 polynomial, but we didn't have to make choices about what the degree of the polynomial is. But we do have to make some choices, and there are some downsides to kernel estimators. And in the next video, we'll look at um, the mathematics behind kernel estimators and think about some of the trade-offs that are involved.